Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are week 114. I know, it's so boring because I say this every single week, but oh my goodness, can you believe we are at week, at week 114? I just, oh, I find that just absolutely flabbergasting. So yeah, that's how long that we've been going, 114 weeks. So what we are doing, if you haven't seen um, my channel before or if you're kind of new to the mass making um, workshops, we are rerunning um, all the previous weeks. So we are week 14, rerun week 114 or maybe the other way around. So what we're going to be making today is envelopes. Now we did do envelopes a couple of weeks ago, but we made kind of envelope pouch style envelopes. We're going to be making more um, traditional kind of style envelopes today. So I have brought along a whole variety of different papers here. So I've got um, I've got some 12 by 12. I've got lots of A4 kind of principles and things like that. I've got this one, which I don't even know what size this is. Um, but yeah, it's an irregular size. Oh, A5, look. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is cutting them down to square size um, in the first instance before I actually make the envelopes or, you know, when I when I come to make each envelope. So if you're wanting to join along, what you're going to need is some papers, which ideally we're going to cut into squares to make the envelopes with. So if, of course, you've got eight by eight pads or six by six pads that you're kind of, you know, trying to use up, this is a brilliant one for those because, of course, they're already square, you know, and you won't have to cut them down. You're going to need some glue. You're going to need um, a bone folder. Obviously, if you haven't got a bone folder, absolutely fine to use your scissor handles. That would be, you know, awesome as well. Obviously, you can make these envelopes on the envelope punch board. Now, I didn't do that in the last um, mass making session of these, so week 14. And I won't be doing that today, purely because, you know, I realise not everybody has a punch board. So I just want to make this as accessible as it can be to everybody. So, you know, hopefully, yeah, if you haven't got a punch board, you know, you'll see that, you know, you really don't kind of need one to make basic kind of envelopes. So I'm going to just shift these actually onto my lap and we will get making. So I'm just going to make the first one just from a six by six, just because that's super, you know, super basic. I'm not even going to have to kind of, um, you know, cut it down or anything. And I'm just going to show you the very basic kind of format that we're going to be using. So as I say, we're not using the envelope punch board. We're just kind of doing some rudimentary ones. Now, what I'm going to do here is fold this up. Now, this is going to be the top flap. To be fair, I think it could probably be the bottom flap as well. But, you know, I'm going to say it's going to be the top flap. And then what we're going to do, we're going to just fold our edges in like that. Now, again, I don't measure. I'm just judging by eye, hoping that I've got this kind of more or less straight. So that one there, and then I'm going to kind of bring in the other one. Again, just judging by eye, hopefully more or less the same kind of distance. So take that in like that. You know, I'm just, yeah, judging by eye, hoping that I've got this more or less kind of central like that. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of open that out like that. As I say, I think this could probably be the bottom flap as well. I don't really know why I've kind of opted to say it's the top flap. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that was how I did it in the first video because I obviously rewatched it quickly this morning or some of it to see, you know, remind, remind myself what I'd done. Um, and I did start with the top flap, but let's kind of switch it around because I don't think that's kind of a necessary thing to do. Now on that original video, I left these little corners in for the most part. Obviously, if you don't want that, because it will add a little bit of bulk. Now, for this one, it's not really too much of a problem because this is quite flimsy paper. Well, I mean, it's not it's not too flimsy. It's not kind of as flimsy as copy paper, but it's not very thick. This would become more problematic if you're using kind of card. And then what you'd want to do is open this out and just cut these notches out. And that, of course, is what the envelope punch board does for you. It's, you know, it's got a little punchy thing to um, cut those out. But if you haven't got that, like I say, you can just go in and just cut those little notches out like that. I mean, it doesn't take two seconds. And to be honest, it's probably just laziness on my part why I've not, not opted to cut them out. Because, you know, as you can see, it's very, very, very quick to do that. And then you're going to kind of fold that back up like that. Now you're going to then bring your flap down for the top, you know, the closure of your envelope, like that, like that. 
okay? So again, depending on how you've kind of done it, you might find that you then have little notches here. Now, mine have not really kind of been affected too much because they're very, very tiny, that overlap. So I'm just going to leave them and not worry about it. And then what I'm going to do is just take this piece here and just cut that round to give it a sort of better shape, a sort of more envelope -y type shape like that. Okay, and then all you're going to do is add some glue. So, oops, just that second topped my glue up, but I forgot to um, unclog it. So hopefully, hopefully that's all good. Right, and then we're just going to go along here like that and glue our envelope together. So I'm just going to wipe that off with my dry wipe. Okay, now obviously as you can see, I mean my envelope is, um, you know, plain white inside. It doesn't really bother me, um, you know, I wouldn't tend to leave it white, I've got to say, although it doesn't bother me, I wouldn't leave it white. But at this point, I mean you could spray coffee dye in here, you know, you can assemble all of these and then you could kind of go in afterwards and kind of spray your coffee dye. So as you just get it going just under there a bit and then all over here. And that would obviously then colour that and make it look a bit more vintage. Or you could obviously just ink it up with your um, Distress Ink. Let me just see if I've got some coffee dye here. I think this is coffee dye. So I'm just going to cut this envelope flap down slightly. And again, you can use your, um, you know, if you've got a corner punch. So I forgot to mention that you may want your corner punch. But to do your envelope notch. So just like that. And then you've just got a slightly more conventional looking kind of envelope there. Now, obviously this is not really dry. So yeah, I probably should have, should have left it to dry for a, a couple more minutes, but just going in. Now this is just coffee and water in this spray bottle. And I have to say it's not, partic <laughs> not particularly spraying very well today. So yeah, it's probably, um, you know, been in there for a little bit long and it's yeah getting a bit clogged and now not really wanting to spray but just to kind of demonstrate that basically you know once you've glued it all together you could just go in with your coffee spray or you know your coffee dye I mean you could go in with a paintbrush you could do it just do it with a paintbrush but you know like that and then when that dries it's going to have a nice coffee dyed inside so I'm just going to put that to one side and we'll obviously have a look at that at the end and hopefully it will be then nice and nice and dry I'm going to lay it on my hot glue gun because you know I find that quite convenient to be able to help dry things okay so let's make one now from like an eight by eight sheet so I'm just going to move my camera slightly let me just finish my tea so my cup's gone from the desk okay right now this is some of that paper that we um uh inked up you know with the Oh, what to call them you know alcohol inks so again I want to kind of come in now obviously this paper I did this on some scrapbook paper and you can probably see I mean it's got a big kind of greeny kind of patch here I'd prefer not to have that showing ideally so I'm going to make that the kind of bottom section for my envelope so again judging by eye now when I say judging by eye I'm just kind of looking to sort of get roughly you know the same kind of distance here Another way you could do this is obviously you could fold it in the middle like that, kind of squish your bits in. And then what you're doing is you're kind of lining it up, you know, with the points, if you see what I mean. So your points are kind of going to the same places. And that's kind of how you know you're roughly in the middle. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my sides in. And again, all just completely judging by eye. So bringing it in and I just want to get it roughly the same sort of place on each side. I've not really done that very well. So, and again, it doesn't matter if you have to refold this. I mean, I hadn't sort of squashed it in too much. So it wasn't kind of a definite, um, you know, squish down. And to be honest, the more you kind of fold it in, actually, the more, um, what's the word? you know, the more kind of texture, I guess, that this piece is going to have. So, I mean, in some ways, I think it's quite nice if you kind of have to refold it because it then takes on a bit of a different, um, 
yeah, different feel and a different texture. So I'm going to open it out again and I'm just going to cut these little notches off. Obviously, remember that this is a 8 by 8 sheet, so obviously it's, you know, considerably bigger than the sheet that I used last. And like I say, I mean, you can make these from anything, you know, you're just using squares. So, you know, I mean, you could probably even do 12 by 12. Um, I haven't tried a 12 by 12. I'm not sure whether it would just look really ugly and big. Um, but yeah, you could definitely try that, to be honest. You know, if you fancy trying a 12 by 12, then, you know, who knows, it might be quite nice. So again, just going to cut my envelope kind of inside piece there. Okay. Oops. Not making a good job of this at all. But I mean, as you can see, they're very forgiving. You can just kind of go round until you've, until you've got it looking good. You could also kind of squish it in and then cut it like here so as you've done both sides together and that might be a better alternative to get them kind of a bit more um you know level so that they're kind of more uniform so then again I'm just going to take my glue and I like to go sort of around the outside and around the inside of these edges if you see what I mean so I've gone around the outside on this top one and around the inside edge of the inside flap so I hope that makes sense and then just glue those down like that. Now for this one, obviously this was that um, scrapbook paper. Not overly happy with the, you know, this appearance on the inside of the envelope. Personally, I mean, I just think that looks pretty horrible, to be honest. So, so I want to try and cover that up. So I've got some book page here. This is just some um, thesaurus page or dictionary page, I can't remember which. But um, all I'm going to do is pop this inside that flap so I'm just going to take that down so it's a bit smaller like that okay now I like to just do this instead of um, cutting I just find it you know works quite well except not today because of course it's just going to make it look like I'm completely bonkers there we go and then just check that that's going to slot in here. I might need to take it down slightly more. Okay, so like that. So I'm just going to glue that in here. Like that. So that's just kind of that bit that's sliding in and then around here, around the flap. And then extra where you think that that fold's going to be. Obviously I, I could have done the fold first um you know it just happens that I haven't so I'm just kind of guesstimating where roughly that fold line is going to go so I just pop that in like that I'm just going to push it down as far as I can until kind of the top starts to be poking out try and get that straighter even that out with my glue spreader which is my Costa card okay not my Costa card that I use obviously <laughs> Okay, like that. And then I'm just going to trim this up here. Oops, around the edge. Okay, and there. And then for this one, so I'm just going to fold this down. I just want to kind of make sure that it's really nicely glued down first. Again, I should probably leave this to dry, but you know, when you're doing a video, obviously you can't really do that. So I'm just going to take this and fold the flap down roughly where, where it needs to fold. So, oops, again, just trying to eyeball that to get it as straight as I possibly can. And then just bone fold that down, like that. Okay, and then I can obviously go in and kind of burnish that down. I'm not making a very good job of this, it's got to be said. Um, but, you know, I mean, again, once this has dried, that's all going to be fine. It's not really going to be, a, you know, a big issue. And then I'm just going to go around here. This time I'm not going to use my corner rounder. I'm just going to try and judge it by eye. And I've got slightly bigger kind of round edge, if you see what I mean, for my envelope flap there. And that looks really nice, doesn't it? And, you know, again, I mean, once that's all kind of inked up and things, that will look really, really pretty. So that's another way to kind of like line your envelopes if you didn't want to kind of coffee dye it. So we've got the two different kind of insides there going on. 
obviously if you're using double-sided paper um you know or indeed if you don't mind the white on the inside then you don't need to do either of these steps you know that's absolutely fine but I'm just kind of making some suggestions for if the inside of your envelope is white or like for instance here where it had kind of that pattern that you could just see slightly through then this is a kind of you know suggestion of how to kind of finish them off so that's those okay so we'll just come on to another one so I have got here what have I got uh, okay so I've got here this is my um I've forgotten what this is called. It might be Midnight Moments. I can't quite remember. Now, I saw a trick here of how to get a square from an A4 sheet. I hope I can remember how to do this, but I'm pretty sure it was, uh, ooh, what was it? Fold it in. Was it fold it into that edge? Like that. Okay. And that should give you your A4 kind of piece there or well, not not a four sorry your square your square piece so if I kind of hold that now together as best I can and then trim down that edge oh sorry about the um rain there I've got this horrible feeling it's going to get really dark in a minute because it's just one of those days that's just um yeah a bit dark and dismal and I think the rain's kind of set in now for the day so we've got a rough square there I mean, hopefully better than a rough square because that kind of little technique should give you more or less the perfect square. So if I just kind of measure it there, yep, we're going to the six and yep, we're going to the six. So it was pretty good kind of little technique for just, you know, getting yourself a square piece of paper from an A4 sheet. Okay, um, right, let's decide which way I want this because obviously if, you, you know, these two have been plain, I mean, that one's checked, but technically is kind of plain if you see what I mean from a point of view it hasn't got an upright pattern so and this one obviously is completely you know not got any kind of pattern going on so for this one obviously we've got the pattern going up this way if you see what I mean so again you might want to kind of just pay a little bit of attention as to what way round you want your um, envelope obviously if your envelope is going to be stuck on the page then, you know, you're probably only going to be bothered about this section here, if you see what I mean. If you're going to have your envelope as a pull-in, pull-out piece, this may be the more kind of important side to you. So just kind of work it out or, you know, just guess which way round that you might like it. So for this one, I'm thinking I probably want... Hmm, just going to see what looks better to have as the envelope flap. I mean, that's pretty nice, to be honest. I'll just pull each side in and just see which looks best. Oh, that's quite nice as the envelope flap, actually. Okay, so I'm going to go for that one, which weirdly, I mean, that's actually the upside down um, way, but I just thought actually that looked quite nice as the flap. Oh, but I'm not quite so keen as that with the envelope. Oh, let's... Right, let's do a reshuffle. So we're going to have this, I think, as the flap, and we'll have this tucked up. Okay. So again, I'm just folding this up and, you know, again, like we said, you're either kind of trying to line your points up there or, you know, you're just looking here to kind of eyeball so you're getting roughly the, the same amount of space around, you know, each one of the edges. Again, I've probably taken that way, way, way too in. So perhaps I'll make it slightly sort of smaller flap like that. So just again, squish that with my bone folder and then fold my edges in like that okay don't think i've made a very good job of folding that one but we will see yeah not not done a very good job it's not very straight but like i say you know they're quite forgiving and you can kind of then adjust them and you know it should be kind of no no drama really so squish that down there oops and down on this side as well okay like that and then again I'm just going to open it out cut these little notches off now this is a printable and it has been printed on I think it's like 200 GSM so 200 GSM it's I mean your average kind of copy paper is around about 70 or 80 so 
you know, this is kind of considerably thicker than copy paper. I wouldn't really call it card, but it's a lot thicker than copy paper. So, you know, you're just going to kind of vary your notches depending on your paper. Like I say, if it's copy paper that you're using, that bulk is really not going to add an awful lot. You know, it's not going to be kind of a problem. Obviously, this is getting thicker, so it probably is worth doing that extra step of cutting it down. Again, just going to then chop my envelope piece here, like that. Okay, and that's my foundation for my envelope base. Just going to go in and then glue this down here, like that. Okay, and we will stick that on like that. Okay, like that. I mean, as you can probably see, I've not made a very good job of that. It's not particularly even. But again, you know, you're really not going to notice that too much. I don't think it's a problem, you know. I don't think that's going to be, yeah, very apparent, to be honest, when this is kind of in use. You know, you're not really going to even notice that. So again, I'm squishing this down. Now, obviously, this is slightly bulkier. So I might just want to cut those little folds off. So I'm just going to go in here like that. This would have been easier before I glued it together. So that's another little thing to bear in mind is maybe do all your cutting before you glue, <laughs> glue it together. But you know, like you can see, although it would have been easier, it's not kind of impossible to do this. So, you know, you can just play around and kind of find the method that suits you the best. But I mean, they're super easy, aren't they? And, you know, they're, they're really nice envelopes. So, you know, very quick, great way of using up maybe some of your 12 by 12 pads um, and some of your eight by eights and six by sixes. Again, another great way to use up things like, you know, if you've got an overspill of principles and things that you've not used, you can just obviously make your squares and then just, you know, make some envelopes from those. So, super quick and easy really so i'm going to start talking you through the process now and just kind of get on um with making some and we can just kind of relax into it and have a nice catch up and um yeah hopefully just kind of have a nice time and and do some serious crafting so again just going to kind of make my square in the first instance so just kind of holding that there oops and then just cut my square down so I hope everyone's having a good week. Obviously, if you watch my channel, you'll know I film these mass makings on a Monday generally. Um, ready to go up for you guys for the Tuesday. So I hope everyone's week has started out well. I've had one of those silly mornings <laughs> this morning. You know, when you just have those mornings where nothing's really going quite right. It's been one of them for me. Um, Ugh. And to be honest, when you have those days and they start out like that, I don't know about you guys, but I just generally think that's how they then continue. You know, the whole day just continues like that. It doesn't generally get any better. It just tends to stay, stay that way. Right, I'm deciding how I want my envelope to be. Um, you know, which way, which way I want things going. So I think probably, yeah, probably like this. So just going to fold that in there. Yeah, it's been one of those silly mornings. So it started out, um, I'm still trying to be really good and go to the gym um, in the morning. So I get up at about, um, well, I get up at 5.27. Don't ask, I don't know why my alarm goes off at 5.27. But yeah, it was just kind of, when I first set the alarm, I couldn't be bothered then to adjust it from like the 27 to the 30. And I thought, oh, that's close enough. So it's just stuck now. And that's the time that I, <laughs> that my alarm just goes off. Um, and then I try and get to the gym for six o'clock. Now the gym, very luckily, it's only literally about four minutes drive from my house. So, you know, it's super close and everything. And yeah, I go while the kids, they're all still asleep. Um... And then I get back, obviously, before my sons have left so that they're there, obviously, with my daughter. Um, so I'm still trying to be really good and go to the gym. But whilst I'm at the gym, I then do that FaceTime thing. Not FaceTime, but, you know, Messenger. To my middle son to wake him up for school. Um, 
sometimes he's better than others at waking up, I have to say. Sometimes I might have to call him, like, continually for, like, ages. Um, and sometimes, you know, he'll kind of wake on, like, the, you know, the first time around, the first go kind of thing of, of phoning him. But yeah, generally, I mean, I normally have to maybe ring him, you know, a couple of times before he finally picks up and wakes up. So this morning, I'd FaceTimed him or, you know, done that messenger, you know, the messenger video thing is what I mean. I've done that several times and um, now I've got my headphones on at the gym. So, I mean, I can't actually speak to him. I just can hear him um, and he knows that I can't speak to him <laughs> because I said to him, you know, well, when you answer, I'm not ignoring you, but I've got my headphones on. So obviously I, you know, I don't have the ability to speak, um, you know, so I just can kind of hear him and yeah, I don't think he can really hear me. Um, anyway, so messaged him several times this morning no reply so then I messaged my elder son who you know he's pretty good and he kind of he can get up when his alarm goes off um I mean I think my middle son can too when it suits him but of course getting up for school is probably not something that suits him so you know he often doesn't really wake up when his alarm goes off I mean sometimes you can hear his alarm going off for like you know 15 minutes or so Anyway, so I then messaged my elder son and said, you know, can you go in and wake your brother up, please? So he did that, um, you know, for me. But yeah, so that's kind of the routine is normally I'm at the gym, then I kind of message him to get up. And, you know, generally I kind of ring until he kind of picks up and just says, hello, mum, I'm up, you know, um, and that's it. Anyway, this morning he was obviously super tired because he wasn't picking up on my, you know, my messaging him. And then, as I say, I had to then say to my eldest son, can you go in and wake your brother up, please? Um, you know, which he did. However, when I got home, obviously, again, oh, my middle son was then gone back to sleep. You know, my eldest son was about to leave for work. And, yep, the middle son, he'd gone back to sleep. My daughter, she was still sound asleep. So it was just like, oh, goodness, really? So, um yeah, very, very... Oops, I forgot to put the uh, glue on the outside there. I was so busy in my story of uh, <laughs> my morning routine, which I'm sure is not very exciting to hear, really. But anyway, I got home. He, he'd gone back to sleep. So I went back in and woke him up again. Oh, you know, like as if it was, you know, being woken up at the crack of dawn or something. Um, so, yeah, woke him up again. Then showered and everything, you know, got myself up and everything. And then woke my daughter up. She also was very tired this morning. And then um, went back in to my son, said, you know, shall I get you some cereal, you know, when I go downstairs in a second? No, mum, stop it. So I interpreted that to mean like, you know, no, I'm, I don't know. Like sometimes he likes to grab himself a sandwich and things like that, you know, on the way to school like in the shop I don't know he you know you know what teenagers are like they kind of like do their own thing don't they so yeah I kind of interpreted that to mean he was wanting to do you know his own thing so went downstairs again my daughter came down you know gave her breakfast and everything made made her pet lunch and stuff anyway he still wasn't down from school uh from uh bed so, or, you know, from, yeah, wasn't down anyway for his breakfast or to say goodbye. Um, and he generally kind of walks to school. Sometimes he'll bike. So at this point, you know, he's obviously now late for school. So I'd been calling him and obviously he'd been ignoring me. So then it was time for me to take my daughter to school. So obviously I ran back upstairs, said to my son, you know, oh, and he was back to sleep again, would you believe? So, of course, we had a bit of a fallout at that point and, you know, said to him, get out of bed. And, you know, I wasn't probably very polite about it. Told him off and, um, yeah, said, obviously, I'll have to give you a lift now. And obviously, I wouldn't normally drive round to take my daughter to school because she's only around the corner to home. But, you know, of course, I had to then um, take her in the car, take him in the car. So, yeah, did that and dropped him off to school and her, obviously. So that was kind of like, you know all very rushy and just you know one of them things that you just think oh I could have done without that this morning really um you know and of course he was obviously not very happy probably with me either because you know you know what kids are like they just deem that you've woken them up unnecessarily and 
you know, they don't like being woken up, do they, as teenagers? So, um, yeah. But I said to him, you know, for goodness sake, tonight you're going to have to have an early night. Because, you know, again, it's very difficult. I mean, I go to bed and, you know, generally my sons are kind of still up beyond when I go to bed. And, you know, I mean, on the whole, they're quite sensible and they go to bed, you know, at a reasonable-ish hour. I mean, I wouldn't want to be up as late as they are, but, you know, kind of trust them to do their own thing. So, but I said to him, you know, you're going to have to have an early night tonight because if you can't get up for school, you know, you're going to have to go to bed earlier, aren't you? <laughs> you know, grunting, grunting as they as they do. So, yeah, that was kind of my morning. And, um, I mean, it's still the morning now, obviously. But also, I've forgotten to say, so, yeah, I'd come down this morning and the kitchen was like a bomb site, you know, because my eldest son had gone away for the weekend with his friends and um, he'd got back and obviously didn't get back till about eight o'clock. And I actually didn't expect him to even get back at eight o'clock because they'd been quite a long way. And, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, doing what young people do, I guess. But yeah, I mean, obviously nice, you know, they'd had a nice time. But so I hadn't obviously cooked him dinner. So he obviously missed dinner. Um, because, yeah, I didn't expect him to be back in time for dinner. So he had then been cooking last night at about 10 o'clock, um, which, to be fair, they often do anyway, even if they've had dinner. They kind of maybe make themselves something later on after I've gone to bed. You know, because they, they're boys, and, I mean, boys do eat a lot of food, don't they? So, yeah, they often cook something else. Anyway, I came down this morning. Oh, my goodness, the kitchen was like a bomb site. Now... I don't know about you guys. I mean, craft area not included here. Massive disclaimer there. Obviously, I am not including my craft area when I make this statement. But pre-children, I mean, not that I had a craft area pre-children because I, I didn't craft back then. But pre-children, I had an immaculate house. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, very, very, very tidy house. Very tidy, very clean, you know. Yeah very um organized and all the rest of it oh after children well you just lose the will to live don't you because you know they all just make such a mess to be honest and trying to keep on top of other people's mess it's just no joke is it and you know you kind of like lose the will to live really so um anyway i'd come down this morning oh my goodness to say the kitchen looked like a bomb site is an understatement it was absolutely appalling so, yeah, my day had not started well straight from, you know, straight from the off. I was pretty irritated because I just thought, are you kidding me? Look at the mess that you've left everywhere. There was obviously the frying pan and all the plates piled up. You know, we've got a dishwasher, but of course nobody could be bothered to empty that and put their plates in. And, oh, I mean, you name it, it was all over. We had washing all out because it had been a really, really foul weather weekend. And so I'd done a couple of loads of washing, <clears throat> you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you have to do kind of washing like every, every day, really. Um, but as soon as the weather's terrible, then, of course, that one load might sit around for like a couple of three days, you know, sit in the kitchen, kind of on the chairs and things like over the backs of the chairs, trying to get things dry. So with the frying pan and the plates and the washing and everything else, let's just say it did not fill my heart with joy. <laughs> I felt very, very, very cross. And to be honest, you know, I know this sounds ridiculous because obviously you've all seen the chaos that I like to work in, you know, that chaos that is my desk. I love, I love working in that mess in my craft room. I do not love working in that mess in my kitchen. So, you know, when I go down and then it's just mess everywhere, oh, I mean, it just makes me feel, like, stressed and anxiety. So, yeah, I was feeling really, really irritated. So then when my son then, you know, overslept and all the rest of it, I was just like, oh, I'm on on the um, rampage now, just kind of like, yeah, was was a stroppy mum, let's just say. not Not probably very nice to be around. But, oh children mm. so yeah anyway that's how my morning went and um yeah dropped him off to school and you know hopefully he's having a nice day hopefully I didn't ruin his day by going on and on and on but probably did a bit but hey he ruined my day a bit too um yeah 
anyway, so then came back and I had like a few things I needed to sort out like on the phone and things. Oh, and then, you know, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this. Since like the COVID thing, it's just a nightmare trying to do anything because I don't know whether everywhere is very short staffed still and things like that. But, you know, I phoned this number that I had to phone twice I rang and twice they cut me off. I mean, it's just oh, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, I was not very happy. I did leave my telephone number and hopefully they're going to call me back. But, you know, that remains to be seen because they haven't called me back so far. So, who knows? But very annoying. And I just think it seems to have been since the COVID thing, you know, like this rubbish service now. So, um, yeah, like I say, I don't know whether it's because places are very short staffed now or, you know, whether actually people are kind of taking advantage of the situation. I'm not really sure, but it's very irritating. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my ranting. Um, on a more positive note, just want to say thank you so much to everybody who has entered the giveaway. Um very exciting i haven't read all of the comments um as yet i've read a few um and there's been loads of lovely suggestions for christmas theme kits and things like that um and lots of you have been very supportive to one another doing a thumbs up and all that so uh, that's fantastic thank you so so much because just want to kind of say again the winner will be the person with the most thumbs up so you know it's it's in you you know you guys in the community it's in your gift to decide who's going to win the competition basically or who's going to win the giveaway so yeah I love the fact that you know it's kind of a truly interactive um yeah interactive giveaway because you know it's really exciting that you guys are getting kind of properly involved in picking basically the winner um you know that's really cool so yeah, thank you so much to all those lovely people who've already entered. And I guess the other thing is, you can obviously enter this one as much as you like. Because um, unlike, you know, when we do the kind of comment picker, and then it says like, um, you know, what's the word? Uh, you know, ignore duplicate uh, comments, you know. So if you've entered 10 times, you're still going to only be entered once. In this one... Of course, you know, you can enter more than once because all your entry is doing is you are making the suggestion for the Christmas digi kit and then you're going to be getting the thumbs up from one another, you know, as to like, you know, the most popular suggestion. Um, so, yeah, feel free to enter more than once, um, you know, because like I say, I mean, it's just about you guys all supporting one another, really, and, um, you know, choosing amongst yourselves, really, who's got the best suggestion or you know the most popular the most popular suggestion so yeah feel free to um enter as much as you as much as you like but yeah thank you so much and that is going to be drawn on a saturday so well i say drawn it's going to be closed on saturday and like i've said before i will film that on saturday it's just going to be announcing the winner. Obviously, you guys are going to be able to go on and see who's got the most thumbs up. But, you know, just to save you, I guess, going on there, counting through, um, then, you know, I'll be kind of doing that announcement. But again, and I know I've said this loads of times before, it will depend on my ability to upload the video um, because I sometimes do have internet problems and things. And actually recently I've had a couple of times where we've had like no internet for the day. So, you know, and actually one of those I'm sure was a Saturday when I was doing a giveaway or something. There was something, um, you know, that was like pressing that I had to get up. I can't remember. It may have been a giveaway. Um, so yeah, it's just typical that it happened to be that day. So I'm just kind of, you know, putting it out there that just to let you know, once that competition has, um, you know, closed, once all the entries have been kind of um, recognised, I suppose, I will just mark that as closed and I will have filmed the announcement video. Even if the announcement video has not gone up yet, once that's marked closed, no more uh, thumbs ups will count, if that makes sense. So, I mean, even if then like, you know, in six days time, there's a lot more thumbs up against one of the comments, it will be too late. The, you know, once it's marked as closed, it will be closed. 
So yeah, I hope that makes sense. But yes, do feel free to enter as often or as much as you like because, um, you know, the more times you enter with the more suggestions, you know, the more chance you've got of winning. So I should have probably said that in the beginning. I maybe did, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, do do enter as many times as you like. You know, don't kind of think, oh, I've already put my suggestion down. You know, oh, I've had a better one now. Hey, put it down, you know, because you don't know. You may, you know, you may get all the thumbs up with your new suggestions. So, and do go on there reading through those suggestions, guys. So even if you did it originally, go back on and see, you know, because there might be new comments now, new, new suggestions, which, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you prefer. So yeah, really, really, really grateful to all those lovely people who have, um, you know, thumbs up and supported one another because you know that's what it's all about isn't it and you know they say it's um better to give than receive and I truly do believe that I think it really is better to give than receive because there's no nicer feeling than you know giving to people um you know so by kind of thumbs up in people you are you know you're picking a winner which is absolutely awesome and really in the community spirit isn't it okay right I'm going to move those papers now from off my lap so I didn't get half half the amount done that I thought I was going to get done but let's count up how many we have done so we've got one two three four five six. Oh gosh I feel like I've really done an appalling low amount there uh right but let's get decorating one so I'm wondering which one to decorate I'm thinking maybe this one so this is my um pink Parisian kit these papers and yeah let's just make sure it's squished down nicely now let's see what I've got laying around on the desk because I might have some bits that would just you know tie in nicely with this and I'm thinking that clock is quite nice um, and then something to put here so let's just have a look oh just got oh no I don't know about that actually I mean I guess I could take it down don't think that's probably quite the right thing. It was just that that happened to be there, um, right beside me. And I thought, well, hey, let's just give that a try because, you know, it was right there calling me. Right, let's just see whether I've got anything else here grabbing my attention. Mm. Oh, I don't know now. I mean, obviously, there is an ephemera part to this kit. Um, I don't think I've got any actually printed out, would you believe? So, yeah, I'm just having to kind of work with what I have got printed out, which, of course, is not pieces to go with this kit. But, you know, that's fine. Let's just see. Uh, oops. I'm about to lose a bunch of stuff over the side of my craft cart. Okay. Have a look. I mean, that's very large on there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit too big on there. So I, d I don't mind it. It's got to be said, I don't mind it. But yeah, it's probably not, not ideal. That's probably too small. So I'm in that kind of, oh, nothing's quite right. You know, the, uh, the Goldilocks thing. Oh, the first bowl of porridge was too too hot the second one's too cold you know I mean that scenario here right let's see what else I've got oh, I've got that one I mean weirdly I would never have chosen that because it has the blue but weirdly I don't mind it it kind of looks okay I've got these um which I've had in my stash for a long time I think they were <gasps> oh what were these oh they weren't Prima, they were, they might have been Kazercraft or something like that. But yeah, I mean, that one looks quite nice, to be honest, doesn't it? So I'm kind of thinking maybe that, maybe might be able to have a clock on there to the side. So let's just cut this out. Let me put my glasses on to cut this out because uh, just laziness not to, isn't it? Yeah, we had the most hideous weather on Saturday. It literally poured the entire day. It doesn't that often pour for like a whole day. 
you know, normally it kind of might rain for a couple of hours or half an hour, you know, then you'd have some, some break from the rain. No, not on Saturday. It literally poured and poured and poured and poured the whole day. I mean, didn't really go out at all. Um, went out, what time did we go out? Oh. Trying to remember now. I think we went out, I couldn't even remember now where we went. Um, what did we do? Oh, I know. I just took my daughter to um, Costa for a little bit of mum and daughter time. And I think that was about oh, four o'clock, something like that, four o'clock. Um, just because she was beginning to drive me potty. You know, like when kids haven't really been out of the house the whole day, and then sometimes it can get to about three o'clock or something, and they're like almost <gasps> climbing the walls because they've done nothing. But it was such horrible weather, and I just thought, well, you know, why are we going to go out? What are we going to be doing? So, yeah, we hadn't been anywhere, but it got to the point where it was like, can't stay in any longer. It was kind of, yeah, more more pain staying in than actually going out in that rain. So, yes, we did go out. Um, yeah, it was just horrendous the whole day. And actually, there was an awful lot of flooding and, you know, like surface flooding and things. But, yeah proper rainy 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 day horrible horrible and then yesterday thankfully was a lot better um sorry i'm just looking for my blendy my blendy tool i wonder if i knocked it off the desk earlier no can't see it there sorry about this guys oh there it is right um yeah so that was saturday yesterday was much better um yeah i mean it's getting chilly now i mean of course we are into autumn and um yeah the weather's kind of reflecting that and you know rightly so so it's kind of like jumper weather now and there was one day last week i can't remember what day it was but it was very chilly i had to have a jumper and a cardigan on i mean i do feel the cold um but yeah i thought oh i'm already i'm already having to wear like a jumper and a cardigan which sounds excessive but yeah it was quite chilly Right, just having a look to see whether I could layer up a couple of things on here. I think that's probably a bit, a bit weird. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, I don't know whether that's quite the right thing, to be honest, to have here. Mm. Oh, sometimes it's a tough decision, isn't it, to um, pick something. I don't know why I've pulled that in, but yeah, I just kind of thought... Mm, Perhaps that would um, complement it in that clashy way. You know, like sometimes you can use something totally contrasting and it's like, oh, look at that. Got this big crown here. This was off some, I think it was Christmas cards a few years ago. And of course, you know, I had to keep this. I think I had a box of them that I managed to buy in the, you know, like after sale thing, you know, the after Christmas sales. Um, so I think I've actually got a box of them or maybe I have pulled the crowns off of all of them now but if I have done that who knows where those crowns are because uh, yeah they're not all in there together right thinking maybe this like that because that's quite nice isn't it and I just wonder whether I could just do my favorite of having a bit of black lace on here just because I feel like this kit really is kind of screaming black to me. Although, weirdly, everything I've put on there that's been black hasn't really looked very good. But I'm still still going with it and still still hoping that the black is somehow going to, going to come through and look good. But let's try that there. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yay. I knew that the black was going to look good somehow, but... Yeah, it just took a little bit of playing around to get it to actually look quite right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hot glue this down. And the hot glue is going to then stick that lace down. So just go round the edge. And I know I say this all the time. I'm just going to pop this on like a pocket. So I've done it on three sides. Just because if you put it on as a pocket, like I always say, you know, you don't have to use it as a pocket, but you've got the option. If you don't put it on as a pocket, then, you know, you don't have that option later, do you? So, you know, it's it's no drama, is it, to just, you know, glue it on three sides instead of all over. It's, you know, 
And actually, I just think it's quite a good thing to get in the habit of doing, really, because, um, you know, the more pockets, the better. Even if, like I say, you choose not to use them, you know, you have always got that option should you want to. So it's just, yeah, something that I quite like to do. Right, I have made a bit of a mess with the hot glue. Right, let's have this here. So, and that just covers up some of that stuff that actually is now, you know, very obviously upside down. Let me just, oops, grab my postage stamps. Let's just have a look here. Okay. Right, that's very orange on there, isn't it? This is quite nice. It is really nice. The only thing is I actually feel like that one blends in a bit too much. So, yeah, it's not kind of working from a mm, blended writing. Oh, what a lovely stamp. I can't read what that says. I think it's Argentina. Isn't that a lovely stamp? I mean, it's just that man's face. Um, but it just is really nice, isn't it? I'm not saying his face. I'm, I'm not saying he's got, <laughs> not got a nice face, but... You know what I mean? I'm not saying that his face is what's doing the, you know, the good for the stamp. Or, you know, that's not what's making the stamp lovely is what I'm trying to say and just waffling. Um, but it does look a really nice stamp, doesn't it? Oh, I want to have two on there and I'm just trying to find quite the right thing to have poking out. I mean, they're just too orange and too red. Um... And there's one or two that they're too nice to have them hidden behind behind that. You know, they're just, they're going to get lost. And what a shame because they're really nice stamps. So, yeah, who wants to have them kind of buried behind? That's not too bad. Okay, let's go for that. I'm not saying it's the best, the best I could have found. But, you know, otherwise I'm just going to be here all day trying to pick the right stamp, which is slightly ridiculous, isn't it? Okay, right. Okay, pop that one down like that. Okay, right, mop all of that glue up. Okie dokie, right. Move that one up a bit. Oops. Right, we're going to have that there. And, ooh. Just going to check that I wouldn't rather... Oh, that maybe is nicer, actually. Plus, that does cover up that mess I made with the glue. Which, oh, that can only be a good thing, can't it? So again, I'm just going to go in with the hot glue here. Probably make more of a mess now with more hot glue seeping out. But let's just try. Okay. So, oops, burnt my finger. Pop that down there. Like that. Now, I happen to have one of these here, which I've just used this for something else that I've done this week. Um, which will be coming up on my channel, but not for a while, because I'm actually, you know, quite a way ahead now with my filming, which is awesome. I just absolutely love it when I've got kind of a few videos, you know, filmed ahead. So, um, yeah, I could do with probably still some more, because I do always like to have lots filmed ahead, only because, you know, you just don't know, and it only takes for someone to be ill, and I say this all the time, but, you know, someone to be ill or, like, you know, if me and the kids go somewhere kind of for a few days... Or anything like that. Or, you know, like it's half term and I don't get to film and things. A very, very short amount of time. You can just use up like, you know, seven days worth of videos. And, you know, you maybe only replenish like two days. Because you've only had like a chance to film two videos. And then, you you know, it takes quite a lot of then work to get five ahead again. If that makes sense. Because, of course, you know, all the time that you're filming ahead, you're also uploading that day's video. So, yeah, it's quite hard to, um, you know, get ahead, really. So, there we go. Oh, I love how that envelope looks. Isn't that just so scrummy? And so, on this side, let me just put these stamps away because I obviously don't want another postage stamp on this side. But on this side, I mean, again, for me, I don't really feel like I need to go too to town. Too to town? Um, yeah, too over the top with this. Because I feel like, you know, I've got a lot going on now on the back. Um, you know, or the front, depending on how you look at it. I don't really feel like it's necessary to now go too overboard with this side. Um, 
you know, because it's got a lot going on on the other side. So, you know, for me, I'd be happy just to put maybe just a bit of lace on here or something, maybe a little bit down here. So I'm just going to just pop this down here, just use my tacky glue. Oops, just trying to work out which is the right side of the lace. I know I say things like that all the time, but yep, just pop that down there. And then to be honest, I think maybe just on here, um, I maybe cut that flap down a bit because I've done that just with the corner rounder. So I could maybe kind of make it more roundy like that. And then that obviously shortens that flap quite a bit. But I'm thinking we could either put um, maybe a bow if I've got one that's a good colour. Oh no, not that, not that. Um, got my labels. Let me just have a look here. Hold on a second. She says, and now of course I can't now find them. Hang on two seconds. Oh, right, got these ones. Oh, where's my full page labels? Because they're obviously a bit small. Because I was thinking we could have a label to kind of actually tuck it into um, down here. Aha, right. I'm thinking this one. So let's just cut this one down. So and these labels, they're all in my shop. Um, I can't remember whether it's a nine or a ten page download, but you get lots of different pages of the labels in all different colourways. And there's some with kind of numbers and details and things, and some like this with like lines. Um, just quite versatile and useful. And um, I think there's like five pages of large ones and it might be like four pages of them in a shrunken version or six pages with three small. I can't remember, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully kind of between like all the different colours and all the different sizes, you should have plenty to play with for quite a long time to come. So, and I just, yeah, I just love having loads of different things to use. So, oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? So what I'm going to do, I think is maybe i was gonna say take that flap down a bit more but actually i'm going to go for it like that so whenever i sort of put a tuck like this i like to put it where it's going to go like that and then i bring the envelope flap up with the piece in place if that makes sense and then i'm going to glue it there because that gives me a guide for where my glue needs to go so i just want to glue it around because otherwise you know, I've had lots of occasions where I've then either glued it down, you know, too, um, too much glue so then I can't get my flap in or not enough glue and then, you know, my flap is not really a flap. It's just a great big JP thing. So by doing that, I just find it's a really handy way to show you exactly where that tuck needs to be. So that's that envelope. I love how that looks. It's yummy, isn't it? Really, really scrumptious. So let's have a quick recap of the ones that we have done. Like I say, I was pretty rubbish on the number that I've actually managed to make this episode. But yeah, I've probably just been rambling on so much and moaning about my rubbish day. But um, I think obviously also I delayed it slightly because we'd kind of filled the inside of this one. But again, that's just something handy to kind of bear in mind that if you don't like the inside of your paper it's quite easy to just cover it up with like some book page or some sheet music or, you know, anything that you like. And again, this one, we just sprayed in that coffee dye, which just, you know, transformed that. If it was just the white paper, that would look, you know, considerably different to how it does now. Um, so yeah, we just made obviously the six, but we've decorated this one up, which I absolutely love. Really, really gorgeous. And um, yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed the mass making session. As I say, I hope you've all, um, you know, uh, entered the giveaway, uh, you know, giveaway. And if you haven't, head on over there. I uploaded it. I think it was Wednesday last week and it was is being um, closed on Saturday. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I hope you all have a great week and I will see you guys soon. Thanks, then. Bye.